All right, so we shall begin on last week's episode of Critical Role. What's uh, what's the name of this town again? Artfelt. It's in the top left corner, brother. The hazards of Heartfelt. Everyone died. Hooray. Oh. According to the, <laughs> the recap. <coughs> Gotta watch. So the town has been cured. The amulet's been given to the priest, and the town has been saved from the abyssal plague for now. Hopefully. For now. For the nearby future. Well, that's wild. I took a minute and a half, that's for sure. Sure did. Well, well we actually did it. Take you guys a while. But you, you found the amulet, a holy relic, capable of curing the plague. However, you found out that uh, obviously there are more occurrences of uh, abyssal invasions and Oscar Crossroads is recruiting for an abyssal mm. army. That is true. Which is very scary. And Derek is still married. Derek is still happily married. And his wife is caring for all of the orphans that you brought and dumped on her. By traumatized with nursery run. Yes. So she's really a saint. <laughs> oh, she just she gets better and better. Yeah, she makes a great wine. Feeds everyone. The gives you all the person. information you needed. And you wrote her I, I hate her. song. <laughs> <laughs> She's helping us, I hate her. And Giancarlo is in uh, Moravian City, hopefully relaying all of the events that have occurred and bringing help, because it looks like you guys are going to need it. Whoa. I'm honestly shocked that he is willing to talk to us at this point. Talk to... Me. Giancarlo? Yeah. And you guys have headed to speak to Reese, the priest. He's probably exhausted if you think about it. Reese, the priest. He was very close to death and, you know, he was brought back in the nick of time only to be screamed at and saddled with the amulet and forced to heal everyone. Yep. That's his jab. No explanation. So, is G Dragon have... by chance? Nope, he's here this week. Oh, okay. I'm here. He's here, that sucks. Ugh. Ugh. So, you guys are outside the Iron Horse. There's lively chatter, from what you can tell. You're just going to go straight in? You're going around the back? What's the call here? Guys, uh... I can't go in. I can't look at, uh... Derek and Mary for a second more. Wait here, then. I will. Picture the visage of Derek in your mind, like a little thought bubble creeping up. I'm gonna go sit on sit slowly, on this fence over here. <laughs> wiping his sweaty brow off. His yeah, I want like a Demi Moore, Patrick Swayze moment. We'll just go through the front door, I think. All right, front door's open. You enter the Iron Horse. Does it still smell like death in here? It does not smell like death. That's an improvement. People are cleaning, wiping everything down. It's substantially cleaner than it's probably been in years. Huzzah! One noticeable absence from the group, however, is still Mank Giles. 
Oh, he's dead. He is quite dead. You do see the girl that uh, claimed to make a Giles as her father, however. Uh-oh. Uh, behind the bar, and you see various patrons, including Derek and Mary, helping clean up. These people are eating. People are bringing things from the outside in. Is a bustle. There's even someone playing music. Is it a sitar with a flute? <laughs> it is on as an old man with a uh, a jug and some crystal. Damn. Oh damn! Gravy couldn't do that. <clears throat> uh, I say, Miss Giles, do you know where Reese is? Good lord, I have so many. Such a campaign already. That we've got going on here. Why are there like duplicates of everything? And well, as you ask, uh, Reese comes in from the back door and noticeably like stooped over, heads towards the bar, sits down with a large sigh. Oh, that's why. She just kind of looks at him and uh, just points. <laughs> there he is. I say, uh, Reese, how good is the good work? Oh, well, I think we finally reached everybody that can be saved. Thanks to you all. I'm very grateful. I have my own life and those of my friends and town mates to thank. How did you come across this? Uh, we Points to the amulet. We found the tomb of Neralis, and speaking of, I'll need to put that amulet back, so if you could pass that over. Mm, wait, 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 wait a minute. He says, put it back where? So, Neralis' tomb is part of an aquifer that runs water between the two caves. And I believe the only reason it has any healing properties at all is because the amulet was a part of the system. Interesting. Where is this? The caves of Milprey, he says. It, like, dawns on him. Indeed. How did you find the aquifer system? Uh, we found a note, uh, kind of a map. Describing it essentially. Oh, do you still have this map? Uh, I think Gravy has it. I can get it for uh, you. Uh, yes, I do probably. Let me put that in my inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say it was a <laughs> map of the aquifers? Yeah. Okay, I'll put like caves in the notes. Well, it sounds like you may very well need to return this relic to its holy place before a word gets out. Indeed. But if we are to be so close to disaster with such things as the plague here and the other such occurrences before I was infected, it may be that we need to hang on to this for a bit longer. Well, from what we, what we know of the plague, before it starts becoming pustules and disgusting, um, a simple holy relic can heal it. Hmm. Worst he case hears, scenario. He's thinking like about holy relics that he may know about that are around. Well, I am the person in charge of maintaining such holy relics this area and I would be remiss to let it out of my grasp but I will say that I am committed to guarding its protection more so than anybody here if that's what your true concern is indeed 
I would hate for it to fall into the wrong hands. Who knows what could be done with it. Absolutely. Uh, I did have some other questions for you. Uh, Mayor Schoth kept we kept asking him questions, and he kept saying you would be the expert, but of course you've been unconscious. So I was wondering if I could ask some now. Hmm. Yes, go ahead. What do you know of the Enchanted Bard? <laughs> he gums his pants. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> he hangs his head, and he doesn't look up or open his eyes. Oscar Crossroads is threatening nearby cities. He looks at you astonished. How do you know the name Oscar Crossroads? Uh, hilariously, John Carly. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, I was prepared to, you know, wash, wash it away as superstition and local lore. As you are outsiders, forgive me, you have proven yourselves mightily to this town and to me personally, but that is a story that we really don't want getting out with these uncertain times. I don't think it's a story. I mean, for from our point of view, from what we learned from Leafly Village, we were in a tavern with him, and he caused... We assume he caused us to disappear, and that's how we ended up here, naked, without any memory. And after that, supposedly the inn burned down with everybody inside, and they didn't try to escape. And this is the village of Leafly? That is correct. And then our paladin oh. and one of the children there who saw him who didn't die have been having nightmares of him, and now that child has disappeared. Say one of your party saw him? Uh, yes. Did they describe to you what he looked like? Uh, yeah, I, like a, a goat man, big horns, red eyes. His skin gets visibly paler, even more sickly looking than he already did. Um, he swallows deeply and continues. Did he just see them in the dream, or have they seen him? We saw... So they've seen him in the dream over and over and over again, like every night, except one night we saw, I don't know if it was necessarily him, but it looked like him. He uh, it was only there for a split second and then he disappeared again. You say you saw this? Yes, me and a party member. What did member. you see? Uh, so we had a magical light source happening and we kind of saw a shadow and attacked it and he kind of uh, apparated for a second and then disappeared. So you can't be certain it was a goat man? No, not 100%, but seems likely Hard with to. everything that's happening. Gravy could be certain. Gravy, are you there? No, I'm just metagaming him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm eating my chocolate. Delicious. So when he says, uh, well, then you, you can't be certain, I, I don't think it's worth, you know, scaring everyone if you can't be certain that that's what you saw. I mean, it is one thing to think that dreams Do you want us to, to be life, prepared, but... or do you want us to be caught on the back foot? I get out the bow that uh, Oscar dropped oh, when yeah. we chased oh, him, smart. and I show it to Reese. Smart. So, Harry, you're there with Gene, then? Yeah. I think Gail's here, too. I think the three of them are there. Everyone I'd... except Gravy is yeah. here. Yeah, I'm okay. just having an emo moment on the fence. Cut my life into pieces. And you <laughs> say this is this is a bow that he dropped? Yes. Did you see him? Yes. I chased him into the woods when he disappeared. And what is it that you saw? I also saw a goat man, right? With the red eyes. Same thing they did. Yep. So you can be sure that it's a goat man with red eyes. We all seem to see the same thing, so it seems likely. It's not that I'm questioning your sanity. It's that I really want to be certain. 
because this is a local story that we tell to children throughout the generations. And with this most recent occurrence, people are already terrified and low in spirits. We may lose everyone. You want to go somewhere more private? Uh, I think we could just retire to one of the rooms upstairs. Okay, lead the way. And he uh, waves towards Minnie Giles and points upstairs and she just kind of nods. Uh, so you guys go up there. He closes the door behind them. And so you say that there's one other member of your party that's seen with his own eyes. Indeed. A goat man. And I'm not sure that we can... underestimate the dangers here. It's just... It is one thing for me to preserve the histories, to see the church burn down, to watch people disappear, and things add up. But to see our nightmares come to life, it is, if I may be honest, a little scary. I don't know how we're going to combat this, but Oscar Crossroads is from the abyss. Oscar Crossroads being here indicates that there may be an invasion coming. Indeed. Did you see anyone with him? I don't think so. I don't believe so. You say that you were in a tavern with him and then you disappeared? According to the locals, yes. And that's how you came to be naked in the woods? Yes. With all our stuff missing, we had no recollection. Even our personal items were missing. And then the mayor happened to have purchased some from a wandering merchant that came through town. But why you? Great question. And why would he spare you? To be fair, we don't know that he spared us. And then he burns down this tavern in Leafly? Supposedly. What do you mean, supposedly? The area where the tavern was uh, is shrouded in illusion. We can't figure it out. But we can walk through the area without touching anything, so it's not invisible. But who knows what happened to those people and whether the fire was real or not. Well, Vosker is capable of making you all operate. He's more than capable of creating an illusion. He's a powerful mage, according to the stories. And you say Giancarlo explained this all to you? Yes. Where's Giancarlo? Uh, he's in the capital, trying to get some help. Well, that's good. It's one thing to look forward to. I'm not my, sure what kind of help they're going to send us, but... In my personal opinion, I don't think we could await for them to come to us. I think the town would be mostly destroyed and people would be hurt. There's only a few of us who can fight. We can't stop all of them. I think we have to take the fight to them. So we need to know everything Oscar we can about crossroads. them. Crossroads. Go ahead. That's it. With Oscar Crossroads running around here, we can't afford to lose anyone. Indeed. Hopefully they send help soon. And have you informed the mayor of this? Yes, John Collar caught him out, I believe. And did he disclose any sort of plan to you, or should we all get together this evening and we should get Try together to and discuss it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Well, I think I will do my best to try to sequester myself somewhere and get a little bit of rest. Maybe some food and water, and then I can meet you at sundown at the mayor's home. Sounds good. I had one more question before you leave. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to pronounce the word home in abyssal?
can't say that I remember. My abyssal is terrible at best. Um, but I certainly have some text we could look it up in. I could stop by and bring what I have remaining. Perfect. Just bring it to the mayor's house tonight. I'll meet you there. All right. And he taps on the bar for her to bring him uh, some food and drink. Kind of waves you guys off over his shoulder. <laughs> uh, well, he goes Rude. back downstairs first. And then right. taps on the bar. Yep. To eat and drink. So you guys are still in that room upstairs. Um, Somebody needs to inform the mayor that you're going to be meeting at his home this evening to develop some sort of plan. Yeah, Uh, you did notice downstairs when you came in that Cherry was uh, sitting across from Derek and Mary, with all of the kids Mary's watching at another table, (laughs) um, eating and kind of talking. Is Rhea and Sophia there too, or? Um, Reed and Sophia were not there. Okay. I'm gonna go say hi to Cherry and then we can leave. Uh, Cherry sees you approaching Jean and she kind of like waves and stands up. And, uh, shakes your hand. Everything going okay? Yeah. yeah. How is, uh, everything with the mayor? <clears throat> well, with everybody being cured, I think everything's going much better and he's less would be less stressed but we're about to go see him um and we're gonna have a meeting tonight to kind of discuss preparations i think you should come Mm, i can be there uh should i inform rita and sophia they're back at my place uh getting some rest i i think we shouldn't worry them until we have a more concrete idea of what's going to happen okay well i'll meet you there at sundown he said Hey, love you, bye. Back to uh, the <laughs> table with Derek and Mary. Derek's uh, kind of looking over his shoulder, like pretending like he's not looking, looking for to gravy. See <laughs> who's all with your party? So, you know. <laughs> but yes, looking for gravy. I uh, touched, uh, I touched cool. Derek on the shoulder and said, "Say uh, he says hi," and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> Mary kind of looks like taken aback like hmm? what's that all about Derek just shrugs you wouldn't get it <laughs> inside joke <laughs> she just wouldn't get it yeah I guess we're gonna collect gravy and head to the manor manor alright so it's about uh, 12 30, 1 o'clock Somebody's washing machine is going off. No, my fucking phone is going off like crazy. Damn. Way to rub it in. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so cool. Okay. This is more people wanting more shit for me. Um. So you're all heading to the manor, or are you guys splitting up? What's the plan? I'm going to head there. You guys don't have to. I'm going with okay. <clears throat> okay, so the three of you, are you going to meet up with Gravy first, or are you just yeah. like straight because you don't know where he's at? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm on okay. the fence, so. So you're just chilling on the fence outside. <laughs> yeah. He's on the fence about well, I guess, rain. like, yeah, you guys come out and I don't <coughs> notice you because my head is just hung. Like, I'm just like, just like writing something. Like You're like humming a funeral dirge. Yeah, I'm like, up oh, my life. <laughs> I walk up to Gravy, touch him on the shoulder, and say, he says hi, and then walk off. <laughs> Which uh, just what? Fire. Does he? I mean, yeah, cool. <laughs> Who's he? <laughs> <sighs> so, we're off to the capital city? Not yet. Ah, uh, alright, well, the... let me just gather my book. Priest Reese wants to have a uh, a meeting tonight, so we're gonna go and tell the mayor that we're gonna do that. All right. Hey, uh, guys, don't let me talk for the next day. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit behind you guys. <laughs> so you guys 
guys head back to Shoth Manor. Yep. When you arrive at the front door, front door is closed. Good. Knock because it's polite. And, uh... He's gonna have to answer his own damn door. The mayor comes to the door. Uh, brokey? <laughs> <laughs> Hard seeing you open the door, not John Carlo. Well, come in, come in. I'm not incapable. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just here, preservation on the other of... side. I don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> this confounded door. <laughs> I've been trapped here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get out. Uh, he kind of like just turns and walks away no concern for closing the door or anything just assuming you will follow him I will follow close me the to door. the library won't you lead on uh, since I have returned I have been hard at work trying to find anything I can on Oscar Crossroads and I have yet to find much um, I'm hoping that you spoke with Reese Indeed. Uh, that's why we're here, actually. He s would like to have a meeting tonight here at about sundown to kind of discuss things. Just so you know, the priest's name is not Reese and never has been. Yes, it's it is. It's Hissa. <laughs> then why is it Reese in all our notes? That's have been me. I think one of you called him that. We just kind of went with it. But I'll change his name on the thing. It's Ewa I remember Hissop. originally he was had the same name as the flowers or something like that. Yeah, his up mix. It's a subtle memory. His up. Yeah, he was his up. Who's well, I mean, he was answering to the name, to be fair. But yeah, we'll change it. <laughs> Ewa Reese his up. I just said that in case you saw his token and didn't realize. Um, so, uh, Bailey says, and, and you were able to speak with Reese. You mean Iwa? <laughs> you mean Iwa Hissa? He's Reese at this point, man. His middle name, his, his nickname, whatever we want to call it. <laughs> it's too late. Everybody calls me Reese. The uh, mayor just kind of looks back and forth between you guys, very confused. Who? <laughs> <laughs> So you were able to speak with the priest? Yes, uh, we did. There is a meeting at sundown. Here. Oh, good. So we have a few hours here. Maybe we'll get a visit from Giancarlo and some assistance. I can't help but worry about my daughter and new son-in-law. I'm hoping to have word for them. from them. I have sent correspondence as soon as I returned. That I was safe and healed. And the town was doing much better. And for Giancarlo to report as soon as possible. <clears throat> Did you include the part about dashing heroes? Uh, sadly I left that out. Uh, so dashing heroes, what is your plan? How will you save us? Well, we have to learn exactly what Reese knows about what could possibly happen. But as I said to him, I don't think we could put up a fight here if there's even just Oscar Crossroads. I think we need to kind of find where they're located and possibly attack them. So Leafly Village. Indeed. With everybody the way, evacuated, the, it should be safe. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> and that's the only place you've seen Oscar Crossroads. So when you say you're taking the fight to them, is there more than him? Presumably, when is there something I'm missing here? when we're at the wedding, we were attacked by more abyssal creatures. So I assume he has more minions than just those six, whatever they were called. You think these incidents are related? Mains. 
Well, he's from the Abyss. We had the Abyssal Plague, and Abyssal Minions attacked us. It seems pretty consistent. So maybe they have some sort of a stronghold close to here, then. Yes. Yeah, and there's somebody. He pulls, out, he pulls out a map of the area. Um, you guys to kind of like study and look at. One of the marks say abyssal, abyssal camp. <laughs> yeah, abyssal stronghold. I didn't know this was important at the time, but this is. <laughs> <laughs> So it would make sense for such a stronghold between to be between here and Leafly Village, which is here. Oh. Hmm. Did you run into any sort of problems or Where on this map were we at? See anybody on the road? Yeah, exactly. The Avrians? We saw that somewhere so in between. The first time you took uh Junk Hollow. You took like a uh, little known road straight through the forest to here. Oh, heading so north, okay. Y you would have been attacked right around here. Okay. Yeah, we were ambushed. And we saw those Abrians, which I think are also abyssal creatures, no? Mmm, yeah. They have like a shriek. They taste it disgusting. Birds! I remember this. You saw these birds? Killed a few, too. How many they don't were taste there? good. There was you ate them? Yeah, they were Tried disgusting. it a little bit. <laughs> you look shocked. Don't suggest it. How are you able to catch them? They're incredibly fast. Uh, they they didn't try and kill us. Yeah. They started it. So they actively attacked you. Yes. And at nighttime in Leafly, all you can hear is their screeches. Really? <clears throat> so there must be a lot. They're not of this plane. I distinctly remember that as a child reading about these. So they must be getting here from some other way. And you say it was about here that you were ambushed by them? Yes. But you can hear them all the way in Leafly. Yes. And you did visit Slip Cave. Yes. Was anything amiss there? Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you, but there was a statue, some water, a tree, and then a couple of like side tunnels that were blocked. So I'm not really sure if that's normal or not. No. I've been there once, and that's basically how I remember it. It's just being one small dead end. Just a pit stop. So maybe we should find some sort of a scouting party to see if we can track down where they maybe hold up. But clearly they're somewhere along the woods here in Dyson Forest. Indeed. Uh, we have one more lead, but I was going to wait till tonight so everyone can hear it. Okay, well, I then will uh, retire to my study to plan and have some rest before our meeting in a few hours. Okay. Uh, make yourselves at home, obviously. I am a little busy and I can't wait on you, but my hospitality extends to you making yourselves at home, whatever you need, whatever you can find, as far as food and drink goes place to rest. Appreciate and it. Goes to his little study. So do you guys want to take a rest yourselves or are you going to do you have any business to attend to here in the town? My thought is I say this is a party actually. Um, if we're going to scout these birds and we hear them at night time, chances are tonight we're gonna have to go. So maybe we should get some rest. Okay. Bounce like a plan. We're gonna do a night mission, cool. Stealth mission. 
still. <laughs> All right, so you guys get about a four-hour rest. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I still have... Uh, sundown's at about 7-ish, and it's about 1.30 uh, when you return back to the city. So you wake up approximately... 6 p.m. I need six hours for a long rest, right? Could I keep sleeping for two more hours while they go talk and everything and they can wake me up before they leave? I think you need eight hours. Well, no, because eight hours minus two for if you do an activity at night or something like that. Because people take, like, watches and stuff? Yeah. It just has to be, like, light activity. I think it's still eight hours, but you can do light activity for two. Yeah, oh yeah, that would make it sense. Yeah. It. You would still need another four hours. It just two. Yeah, so you could only be have about four. four and a half hours. All right. So sorry, cannot have a. But rest you activity. could do light activity of us talking and then go back to bed. I mean, it would be disturbed sleep, right? It would start over. It'd be the same well, as like, being he doesn't, watch. He doesn't have to come with us. That's yeah, it. you don't have to be there for the meeting, I guess. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to skip the meeting, and then if they leave town or something like that, just go tell them. Wake me up. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But another four hours after that? Yeah, that, I'm be, wondering if it's feasible. That's what I'm trying be to say. like midnight? We're going to wait until midnight to leave. You said it was 1 o'clock when we went to sleep, so it'd be 9 p.m., right? No, no, I said when you got back to the manor, it was about 1.30, and sundown happens at about 7. So you guys slept for about four, four and a half hours because you were there for about a half an hour. So it was two-ish when you went to sleep. But and you we woke rest, up at six. And then around the four-hour mark, we'll discuss Harry. You'll do a lap around town and use scouting skills to see a good area of attack. And then we'll discuss more and then leave at midnight after the eight hours. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that, if yeah. that's what you guys Good are doing. That's, just tell me what you're doing. So, you guys wake, most of you wake up at about 6. And um, you can see that it's getting close to sundown. And uh, you can hear really kind of like talking to himself, prowling around the house. Uh, he sees... Uh, Jean, he's like, ah, oh, you're awake. Of course. We ought to be here soon for our meeting in our we got Cherry coming as well. Attack. Okay. She uh, oh, has been oh. through a lot of a, a lot of this stuff with us, so I think she might have a perspective. Well, let us meet in the library, and then you hear uh, a loud pounding at the door. And, uh, Bailey just kind of stands there. I'll get it. <laughs> and he doesn't seem like that's weird at all for him. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of goes back into the library. Uh, when you get to the door and open it, it's, um... His name didn't change. Great. We don't it's see Reese. it. It's Reese. Reese. We don't see it. Alright. It's Reese. Hi, Reese. We're in the library. He follows you back because he knows where the library is. Oh, I'll just wait for Cherry at the door. All right. And then uh, you don't even have to close the door because there's Cherry. Hello. Where was Cherry? <laughs> Follows uh, you back in. Close the door. The library. <laughs> right. Is that everybody? Jerry yep. says, "Where's Gal?" Sleeping. Mm, makes sense. He's uh, very tired. Uh, so the mayor gets the meeting started. Uh, thank you all for coming. It seems that we need to come up with a of attack as we've shared all the information that we have between us we've yet to hear from Giancarlo or from the Academy of Neuralis uh, 
what are your thoughts? I know what mine are, but mine are to protect the town. So why don't you tell me about what you've been thinking about? Um, so... Our good friend here, Harry, is going to scout the town and kind of find the best place to defend if we have to. Um, and then the rest of us are going to head out tonight and see if we can't track the Abrians to some kind of location, sleeping area, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then with Reese's help, hopefully we can learn some Abyssal in the meantime. Uh, our last port of call, uh, if everything else fails, uh, when we were attacked at the tavern, uh, I'm sure you remember, um, one of the creatures we fought had this parchment, and I produced the abyssal parchment. Um, we know this symbol in the center reads home, we just can't pronounce it, uh, and from my assumption this is some kind of arcane scroll. Uh, the priest held his hands out. Uh, can I can I see that? You've seen it before, and last time you felt very sick. Maybe don't touch it, and I place it in front of him. Don't yes, say home. Yes, but I wasn't fully in my capacities then, I realize now. Um, maybe, and he takes a piece of his robe in his hand like to wrap around it sure maybe it's okay i mean you're holding it in your hands i was never sick though that's true also don't say home you just place it on the table and yeah i'll place it in front of me he studies it and it still doesn't look familiar uh to him and why is it that you believe it's home? Uh, I think one of us compre- I think I have comprehend. Yeah. You do. It was like a- yeah, it's like a tattered end of a scroll, so it's like a piece of it, so... I was able to read it with a spell. So why are you asking me if it says home? I'm asking you to teach us how to pronounce the word. We can read it, but we can't uh, speak it. Well, it's a good thing I brought this book. And he pulls out, like, a tome of, uh, like, a, an abyssal translation with things, and he says, uh, based off of my um, experience, I will try my best. It's not a word that I've heard, but uh, it does say here uh, the word, and it like believe it's pronounced and I, I, sh I shouldn't say it as long as you're not touching the parchment I think it'll be okay I'll take it back from him I believe it's pronounced live. Live? Okay. Live. Live. Well. Now I'm assuming since the abyssal monsters that attacked appeared out of nowhere, that this might be their form of transportation home had they been successful. We don't know for sure, but, you know, it's it's our last port of call, I guess. Like some sort of teleportation scroll? I assume. Mm. I could be very well wrong, and who knows what it actually does, but that's just an assumption based off the facts we have. Well, based off of the tones and study that I have in the past, the abyssal will create a portal between planes. And only certain ones have the ability to generate enough magic for the portal to open. Oscar Crossroads would have that amount of magic. Okay. The evening of the wedding, something would have had to have brought those mains. And 
heartfelt. And they could have, I guess, been holed up somewhere else, but it's fairly difficult to keep them and their activities a secret for long. But I'm with the mayor here. I think that there's a good chance, especially if you've seen Abrian's, or heard them, rather. Oh, we've seen them and fight them. No, they're very loud. Yes. Only a couple, like five, I think, but there was a lot of them. And yes, something with enough power is opening a portal long enough and large enough to bring them through, but why they would bring Abrian's through first very concerning unless this portal's been open for quite some time. I'm not sure if how much Giancarlo may have told you, but this was a very powerful elven scene for a lot of years. He's kind of looking to you guys to see how much you know. Yeah, we read some of the lore in the book between Sandy and Mumbo and Neralis, no, sorry, Neralis and some of the other gods. Though he's pretty neutral, he still has some relations with evil gods like Tiamat. And regardless, um, the relation between the aquifers and this land and also the seat in this land have some sort of a reason as to why you've maintained stewardship over these lands as well as the safety of your people both in uh, balance with the gods as well as uh, a steward of, in a sense, anti-abyssal protection. The mayor looks uh, pretty surprised at how much you know, and then he looks at the priest and he says, that's about it. I mean, my family has been a steward protecting these lands and keeping our knowledge and holy sites protected as a place of research uh, for many centuries and and the priest kind of pipes in and yes we we were long believers of Neralis he was able to pass through his own portals between the lands of the living and the dead under the protection of Sani Mumbo. But many people in these areas don't believe in that any longer, so we function under the guise of academic research, which... Uh, yeah. Do you have the same understanding of Neralis uh, being imp- impaled by his own blade? And uh, just so I'm clear, was that self-inflicted? He like smiles like really big at you and he's like, according to the stories, yes. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I had a question. So a lot of these... And that's the priest you were talking to. A lot of these stories and knowledge has been passed down through folklore. Is there any older folklore that you can think of that you've passed off as myth and legend and not fact? It was always told to me through the Guardians, which is what uh, us priests of the Order of Neuralis, which is our local order. And the mayor looks like really concerned, like maybe he's telling you too much and the priest just kind of like waves him down like they need to understand um, you know what we're working with here if we are to fight the epistle and we are under attack this is something that they've stood against and have a good chance of standing up against in the future it's not like our village is prepared to defend themselves and he looks to cherry who kind of nods um, yes I, I have been tasked by previous uh, generations with not alarming the people and letting them talk about what they'll talk about but I have it on very good authority in the text that we have available to us that 
Oscar Crossroads is a demonic sign of the coming of the Abyss. When he comes, he recruits for the armies of the Abyssal and is followed by demons, which I can say that we've seen ourselves at the wedding reception. And so I was very concerned when you detailed actual sightings of Oscar Crossroads because it is pretty much fact as far as I'm concerned that it is the coming of the end. All right. Listen That's to me very seri seriously right now. You've withheld you information. Saying? You've withheld information this entire time. Now is your last chance to give us everything. I look at the mayor. <laughs> Are Actually, you saying I, that to the mayor? I, I lean on the priest. The yeah. I, I look okay. at the priest in conjunction with... Well, the priest with... was passed out. Like, yeah, we know. Pretty much the entire time. Yeah, I mean, he's still a scholar. He's still with. He still tried to withhold information about Oscar. Yeah, How I guess he, he in the bar. He didn't want to tell us anything. He was like, "Are you sure you've seen him?" Rather than just telling us. I think uh, they're very fearful. Maybe he was waiting to tell you. Yeah. This evening. I think the interpretation. I like. Uh, I pulled a party in for a quick cuddle, <laughs> in the room with the other NPCs, and I go. Guys, I think uh, I think they're talking about the apocalypse. I look at Gene and Harry and Gel if they joined my sports huddle. Yeah, I do, and I say, not my apocalypse. And the priest kind of pipes up from behind everybody. Could be <laughs> excuse <apocalypse> me <laughs> for everyone. The this was a private huddle. <laughs> You're definitely not able to whisper. You're not quiet at all. We've established this. Oh, yeah, Gail's not there, but uh, me and Gene in here. <laughs> okay, the okay. The priest kind of continues, and he's like, I mean, I, I wasn't withholding the information. I was going to inform you here this evening in the presence of the mayor because I wanted to get a good feel for just how much you knew and how committed to the cause you were as... This is as serious as a, a possible apocalypse, but if the Abyssal are invading from another plane, then this is just the gate in the area in which they choose to enter, as it's weak to the passage between planes because of Neuralis' home here, his ability to shift between those portals and in between those planes. Neuralis was the only thing keeping them at bay for so long, which is why he was given the sword. Mm. Well, that makes sense. And this very well could be a problem for everyone that starts here. And it sounds like it's already started. And unfortunately, yes. as the guardian of the relics, my church has been burned, and I've been asleep for the majority of this. The mayor nice. himself would have been left with not much to do other than watch the oncoming apocalypse and choose to scare everyone or do his best to get, ask for help. And the mayor just kind of nods his head and it clears his throat. <clears throat> and that is exactly what I've done. Well... I sent Giancarlo to get as much help as we can possibly get, but this tiny town is not nothing to stand against. We haven't weapons, we haven't an army, we haven't magically trained holy warriors we have nothing you don't have nothing you have an unnamed party of friends who woke up naked together on a weird <laughs> sandy silty forest starting with four pe five people becoming four and also Polly and I produce my bird and I say we shan't let you down this party forever known as Apocalypse Now. <laughs> wow. a, uh, pending, pending discussion with <laughs> the rest of the party. A small tear kind of forms in his eye. And uh, he pretends like it's not there. And he's like, well, I think your idea to scout out just what we are up against so far. As we are but a mere outpost 
on the front of a war that's oncoming, we must gather as much intelligence as we can to relay to those that may be more prepared to help once they arrive. You know, guys, you're not so bad after we get to know you and spend a lot of time helping you and getting together and working together. I'm starting to trust y'all. The mayor says, like, kind of nods, and he's like, well, what I can do is try to get the town to shore up as many provisions and weapons as they can, get those weak and sick children maybe sent off to town or sent somewhere more protective and I can offer my home as a safe haven to them and we will have to just wait until we receive word of any assistance coming and you continue to agree to scout for us indeed we will and just so you know Neralis is on your side uh, our side of course he is <laughs> i kind of, kind of like a little bit. i stand up and i say uh I, i'm also feeling this trust gravy's talking about and with that i have a confession boo Many, if you fucking <laughs> drop some shit on us right now. <laughs> uh, much okay, of my upbringing, it. much of my upbringing <laughs> was uh, shrouded in prophecy of an impending doom. Uh, and I hadn't thought much about it till now. But having said that, another coincidence, maybe, uh, a lot of my power comes from a patron. And that patron is the goddess Shar. Uh, which doesn't mean much, probably, except one of her direct opposing gods was Hanali, I'm sure you know from the Elven Pantheon, but also Sunin Moonbow. So you're Shadowheart? Possibly. <laughs> the priest looks horrified. And you dare accuse us of hiding something? When you're a stranger in our town, possibly directly working for the Abyss? Why are you here? Great question. He looks really confused now. When I was young and accused of these prophecies. Uh, I was greatly shunned by my village, as you could rightfully understand. Uh, and part of that was my mother being shunned as well. And the night of the eclipse, God knows how many years ago, um, they took it as the second sign. And through that, uh, I was beaten and abused. And so was my mother. And not being able to take it anymore, I actually took my own life. And then, I don't know how long later, I reappeared with no memory of what had happened. I don't know how long it's been, I don't know why it happened. All I knew was to search for my mother. I had these two playing cards, and that was it to my name. And I went searching, and I went dungeon delving, and ruin finding, and looking for all the help I could get and found no answers anywhere until I stumbled upon a, sh a shrine to Shah. And through communication with her through a ritual, she said she would give me the power to find my mother and the means to. And part of that was agreeing to a bargain with her, but uh, that's how I actually got the second card. And that was all the information she gave me. So it's very cryptic to me, and I have no idea what it means, but it could be part of what's happening. Wow. You think you know somebody. So you believe 
the priestess that you are being empowered by Shar for the coming war? I think the power she has given me is I could use it as I will, but she gave them to me for the reason of finding my mother. She must be very confident in your abilities. I would assume she's more confident in her own. And where were you, where was this shrine that you stumbled upon? Uh, in a far off land. Do you remember what the shrine looked like? Uh, on this. There's been rumors of some strange um, uh, rock piles kind of appearing in different areas of the forest. And gods such as that would need recurrent power and worship to have enough uh, power to spread amongst uh, its minions to be able to open such portals and things. And I'm not aware of anyone worshiping such a person around these parts but it would seem like they would need to be able to, right? It's above my pay grade. The mayor just kind of nods like, yes, I, I would think they would need someone to empower them, to welcome them in. Can I ask a question to you, townsfolk, cherry, priest, Reese? Iwa Hissup and uh, Mayor Show. They all kind of just look at you with attention. I would ask that we not only research demonic presences, but also ensure that there are no mortal beings like us assisting them as well. Should that mean that there are powerful nobility and whatnot it's important that all of us all the important people in this room super important people except Gail um, come to an agreement that if we are to work together we should be looking at it from all angles And what does this mean? It means it might just be Oscar Crossroads, but we all know that we are all prone to uh, uh, greed and stuff. So it's important that if you are aware of any enemies or people we don't get along with, that we should be careful when accepting help. I wouldn't say don't accept help, I just mean to say keep an eye on even your compatriots from the Morovian capital or the University of Neuralis or the Academy. Unless that's just the university. But, but regardless, I think we are doing good stuff here and some of our next steps will involve our party leaving for the night. Uh, the mayor speaks up. <clears throat> I would agree with you, and I will do my best to reach out to my peers, the other lords and nobility of this land, to see what kind of instances they have to report, what information they may have on suspicious rituals and uh, cult-like activities as well as any supernatural occurrences with anything that could resemble abyssal 
and wait on Giancarlo's report and the intervention of the academy. But, like I said, I will do my best to shore up the village here that we can provide a stronghold. If you uh, will continue to agree to try to scout and find where they're coming in or holding up, uh, so we know just what we're up against in the near future. Agreed. Uh, Priest nods and says, and I will do my best to continue to do as much research as possible on the history should, of the uh, area and what, what we may be looking at as far as the armies of the abyss. We should always look for reward because we are private mercenaries. So if you come across anything valuable, we would love to benefit from that situation. The mayor nods. We will ensure that you are greatly taken care of and known to, for the heroes that you have proven yourselves to be. Thanks, man. Now then, uh, I believe we should all get to work as we may not have as much time as we believe we could. Cherry, are you uh, willing to handle the armor and weapons gathering here in the town and recruit some people to help you continue to manufacture whatever it is that you need? She nods and he says, uh, I will I will provide anything that I possibly can to you uh, here in the castle or material means. And he just kind of looks at the rest of you and when will you leave? Uh, before midnight. We have another couple of hours of preparing amongst the party. I will put you in the forest in the depths of night pitch black it will it will but either way it's going to be dark all right so he kind of goes about his business and uh goes back to his study um, the priest stays in the library. Cherry leaves. So it's about uh, 9 p.m. Let us give Gail another couple of hours since his exhaustion has really weakened him. And, uh... He only needs about an hour, just for the record. I will get you guys in about an hour and a half so do what you have to do all right is anybody doing anything of particular import in that time uh do i have access to the library yeah okay the cool. priest is in there with you as well i okay, i cool. asked the priest to keep an eye out for any potential prophecy in his readings that's my goal I'll scout around the perimeter of the town to see if I see anything suspicious. Alright. So, uh, Gene, what are you doing? Uh, I'm in the library too, just kind of looking for stuff. Okay, so, Harry, you're gonna go out and, um, scan the perimeter of the town. Um, can you give me an investigation check? Yes. So you, when you are um, scanning the area around the tavern, you see um, in the forest outside the back of the tavern where the reception hall is, you see um, what appears to be like char, like uh, coal, like burned black um, along some of the bushes and it seems to be like a small kind of trail. It leads to nothing in the forest. 
but that's all that you find is you know some of the bushes having a strange kind of soot like substance on them you said it was near the tavern near the tavern the woods surrounding the tavern I go back to the party and tell them <laughs> someone was smoking and the priest seems very interested and uh, you've brought back some of the leaves yeah correct um, and he looks at the soot and he's like this looks just like the soot um, that covers everything in the church have any of you been to the church uh, since I haven't made my yeah. way over there it's a little dark now I'm not sure what I would see but I do need to pick up some materials I can certainly go there in the morning uh, I had a question does the soot look like the soot where the inn burned down Yes. Can I try to smudge the soot on the leaf to see if it's an illusion? What do you mean smudge it? Well, when we were walking around the, like, site of the inburning, we would expect the soot to have moved with our feet, and it didn't. So I'm just, like, going to rub it to see if it comes off. It does come off. Somebody was smoking a doobie. <laughs> hey, uh, so priest, save some for the rest of us. Ha ha ha! It's 10 o'clock if you guys want to wake up Gel. Guys, why don't we just leave Gel and go on our own adventure without him? <laughs> Gel, you've had a full rest. Alright, thank you. Let's be honest, what is Gel really adding to our team right now, huh? A healer? Gel walks in and slaps, <laughs> slaps gravy in the back of the head. Maybe if he learned to tank a little bit more, you know? Working on it, working on it. It seems, young man, the priest speaks up. You speak ill of your companion. And the only one that's blessed enough to accompany you on such a journey. If anything, you're going to need the strength of Neralis behind you to fight that of the abyss. So I would treat him with a little more respect. Well, 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 priest Iwaris Hisop. Well. You might right, change your take tune. A, let's take a five minute break and feed the dogs and stuff. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Everybody and Reese are going to get along well. great. He's going to be my best friend. A lot of talking heavy now. part of the... He's your bestie. Yeah, we're going to have we're gonna have our own beer night one night, and I'm going to fall in love with him. I was going to say, like, <laughs> Neuralis Bible study group, but that sounds funny. <laughs> okay. yeah. There could be beer involved. I don't know what those groups are like. Dude, Drunken priest study parties. all get drunk. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like they're one thing they're allowed. Yeah.
Hello? I'm back. Welcome back. So, what's happened since I left? That's the word on. <laughs> we sat here. Hmm. But first I stood up, and then I sat back down. Nice. And that's my thrilling adventure. <laughs> wow, wait. Are, are y'all gonna like uh, rework that that cupboard that you got, or whatever wardrobe? Are y'all gonna uh, it's sitting it, in or? the shed where I elect to forget about it until I have to remember to do something? With it? <laughs> How ungrateful! I have a. But I didn't ask for it. <laughs> I didn't ask. You can keep uh, all the snacks in there. I I got a different trunk that I'm keeping snacks in from that same auction, but it's much more reasonably sized. I meant snakes. snacks. Oh, snakes. I you can just do put that. glass in the front of it and just drop the snakes down into it. I'm sure they'd love that. If I could put it somewhere in my house. You just have to put it sideways and make a table out of it full of snakes. A table full of snakes. With a glass top. You can watch no one snakes. would ever come into my house again? <laughs> she knows, like, that's a great idea. Yeah, he's over there. He's like, is that a downside? Yeah. Like, you he's know? planning it already. I'm going to go down tomorrow morning. It's going to be done. It's like, I did it for you. He's I went and got us five more snakes. <laughs> that no. I <laughs> it just seemed a little empty. There was five spots. For we had snakes. five more spots, so that means we get <laughs> five more snakes. What? Is everybody back? I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> Is Gravy back? All right, Gravy's not back. Man, it's so fucking hot. It's Why is it cool so hot? From all the rain. It's been really nice lately. You guys probably have rain from those hurricanes. Yeah, it's get some spots are a little floody. We just get the rain part, not the hurricane part. Jealous. I like it. It's been drizzly and cool for the last two days. Fucking mm. love it. So nice. No one else is outside because it's raining. So oh, I sent and took like 20 minutes of rain footage at the park and no one else showed up. That's cool. I should stitch it all together. So I just went to like 10 different spots and recorded like 30 seconds or a minute. Honeybee, I don't know what your deal is. I really hope this is just all blood because... Wait. Never, never heard anybody say, Wait. I really hope this is all blood. I scratched her ear, and she's got shit in it, and then I think it's blood from Piggy fucking fighting with her too hard, or her scratching her ear, and then, like, blood getting in it, or it's she's got, like, a yeast infection in her ear. Uh, and you know what that's like, so. I hate the That's why I said I hope this is just dried blood. Jean, you back? Jean's back. I don't know about Gravy. Yeah, I'm here. Gravy, are you here? Brent. He not. Sometimes he forgets his name, so you gotta go through multiple mogging. I hear him talking in the background. Oh, I actually just sat down. Sorry. It's bad. Just talking to my cat. All right, baby girl, go lay down. Okay, so All right. I'm already laying down. Are you guys gonna wake up, uh, Gal? Or Gal woke up and slapped me. Oh, that's right. Thank you. 
and then, and then uh, the I priest got told us. said that was good good person. They need to treat me with a little bit more respect. Yeah, a little bit more respect. As I put a fiver in his pocket. <laughs> Five pence. <laughs> Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> um, all right, go away. So, so Cherry left, right? Cherry left to go take care of Cherry things. Cherry left earlier, the end yeah. of the meeting. So now we're about to leave. Can I ask um, the priest to do me a favor? What is that the sound? Um, could you could you check with Cherry when you see her? I, I don't know if this is at all possible. Um, but uh, if she can, can she try to procure or put together a, a set of chain mail? Um, for me, and if, if just ask her, and if she if she can like look into that and work on that, and uh, if she does, I'll hand over the uh, set that I've already received from her for the scale mail, as well as uh, my javelins that I have. And I'll talk to her when I get back. But I just wanted, if you could pass the word to her. Sure, Ethan. I thought you all might be interested. I found some information on this char. Uh, I don't know if any of this may be helpful to you while you're out there, but it's better to have information than not. Char was the mistress of the night, the lady of loss. She's a goddess of darkness and night in the Ferunian pantheon. She's a malevolent twin sister and counterpart to the goddess of the moon, Sohle. In the 14th and 15th centuries, she held the portfolios of darkness, forgetfulness, loss, and night. And after she slew the underground god, Ebrindel, she claimed the portfolios of caverns, dungeons, and the underdark. Damn. She also, she also held the portfolios of hatred, sleep, nightmares, illusions, lies, trickery, hiding places, betrayal, treachery, seduction, thieves, murder, winter, and lost some of these two other deities. Most importantly, she was the goddess of darkness. So you will be going out into her realm, the realm in which you've seen Oscar, in the realm of nightmares in which she's been traveling. I think it's safe to say the coincidences may be just too great. Oscar may be working under the tutelage of Char, as is your friend here. He points to Jean. I gulp. She also, most importantly, was the goddess of darkness, not only as the absence of light, but as the metaphorical darkness that dwelled in one's heart, mind, and soul. Explains, Gil, uh, explains Jean a lot. <laughs> I like how you just wanted to put that on me. That was like just natural instinct. I got it. Yeah, sorry, but there's three G's, and Harry's like one step away from G. <laughs> she's well, I'll just love the she's same name. depicted as a darkly beautiful human woman in these texts. Long raven black hair, clad all in black. She may have black or purple hued skin, and is often shown with a cowed cloak. said that when she visited mortals in dreams her dark hair would move and swirl regardless of gravity or outside forces and uh, the priest continues to read and then he uh, he like sits down abruptly like he might pass out I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've told the priest this yet, but I want to go ahead and tell him and I'm reiterate this. Um, I, when I first was in the cave, Silpri Cave, I, I, that first night there, um, I had a dream. Um, and in the dream, there was a woman who came to me. She looked elven, um, and she looked like she was being hurt or neat in trouble. And um, I tried to help her, but I couldn't move. And then she transformed and I can't remember what the actual description was of the transformation but I explain it and I'm wondering does this sound at all similar to what Char would be possible of doing I don't Grace know if looks any at relation. you um, and like very slowly moves back to the text 
and he just starts reading. When she appeared in person to two avatars that she favored, the first was the night singer, a figure standing over 10 feet or 12 feet tall, shrouded entirely in a vast cowled cloak that disguised her figure and flowed into all shadows and areas of darkness around her. She wore a mask of feathers of every kind, which concealed her face and disappeared into the dark depths of her cowl. Never simply speaking, she sung her every word with sounds of sorrow and loss, forming a song that was at once heartbreaking and hauntingly beautiful, it compelled listeners to obey her every command or stand helpless in despair. Her other avatar was the dark dancer, appearing as a human woman, seven feet in height, with a lithe dancer's build and divinely beautiful. With little attire, her skin was black as jet, but sparkling with starlight, while her eyes were dark and hypnotic, capable of projecting magic that could ha help or harm in equal measure. Her dance was graceful and beguiling, even erotic, and her sensual performance and suggestive stares were enough to make any mortal fall down and obey her. It was this creature that I saw on my cot lying under the stars outside of the church just before I fell sick. I thought it was a dream. I thought this dancer dancing over the moors between the ruins of the church and the manor house had to be a figment of a dream. She was so beautiful. She stooped above my cot, touched me lightly on the forehead, and the dream was over. It sounds like we've been visited by the same woman, son. <laughs> Shit. I've had that dream. <laughs> I'm still side eyed and Gene going like I wanna know what his thoughts are on all this. Is Gene speechless? <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't say anything though. No. Oh, uh, Gene, you didn't find your mom yet? No. Rough. It could have been worse. You could have been forced mom. to eat her. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again, Gal. I'm just saying, I, I, I have sympathy for you. You've had it worse than him. You win the, the childhood tragedy story. I mean, Gene did die. I mean, my mom died, too, you know? If we're you just throwing this around, like, my mom's dead, too. I won't lie, uh... Yeah, Gene's backstory was much sicker than the rest of ours. <laughs> Perry over really... here with the normal adoptive child childhood. <laughs> yeah. Surprised you became an adventurer, Harry. You have no trauma <laughs> to support. Well, my dad said that it was good to get out of the house and see the world. Ah. <laughs> just, just wanted cool. you to get a job. <laughs> get a job, you fucking slobs, all he replied. To quit being a fucking dinosaur and get a job. Dad <laughs> wanted me to get a job. Get off the couch, man. Go. Get some sunlight. Right. So one thing I found interesting in uh, reading both of these texts between Shar and the wealth of knowledge I already hold about Neralis is that they were both purportedly gods of healing and death. As to where Neralis granted the occasional pardon from the realms of darkness, Shar took delight in it and never did so. It. Damn. Honestly, guys, we learned a lot. I think we should head into the dark towards demonic creatures that probably see better than us. Let's do it, baby. And in terms of dark vision, I got dark vision. I have dark vision, so that's about it here. Yep. So we'll. I'll be in. I'll be in the front as far as formation goes. Um, 
I think One Gravy, you can be in the back and watch the back. Uh, the priest says to you guys before you leave, how much do you actually know about the abyss? All 666 layers, baby. In other words, nothing. Not. <laughs> well, it's important to remember then that the abyss is full of layers, as he so eloquently put, looking at gravy. But it was infinite layers. The infinite layers of the abyss is the birthplace of demons, chaotic evil. It's a plane where there are fairly constant, violent, and malevolent forces at work. The strong survive on the backs of the weak. Alliances only lasted if they're convenient. It is a tortured landscape for all of those involved. It's an outer plane on the great wheel, the astral plane. It is a place where gods and demons function side by side. If there is a portal coming from the abyss, and the abyss threatens to take over ours, you may be faced with things you've never seen before, you can only dream of or have heard of in stories when you were young. Way to lighten the mood. Be careful out there. Remember, you're going into the realm of someone we already know is at play. Maybe not in this war, but in our realm. Someone who is very unforgiving when it comes to death. You don't happen to want to come with us. I believe I'm <laughs> much more functional here. Pats the book and like sits down like he's hard at work pretending. <laughs> All right, well let's uh, let's head off, guys. See what we can find. Let's go see that ambush site we were at. Yeah. Is that where we're heading? Yep. Yeah. Cool. See if we can find any foothold of demonic energy. All right. Can we say that you guys filled me in on the conversation while I was? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. No, we were told it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it's going to get hard to remember what I know and don't know. <laughs> are you just going to take off, or are you doing some sort of preparation? Uh, this is, I don't think I can buy anything. <laughs> I mean, I, the only preparation I'm doing is asking, you know, Reese to tell Cherry to help me out, because I think anything I want yep. is going to take a while, so... Um, don't give up your scale mail if that's all you have. No, no, no. I'm going to wear it. I'm not going to be like you. Oh, I'm going to go freaking free ball out there. I have, uh, <laughs> if you need me, I have 29 mm -hmm. gold. Well, they don't really have magical items. G, do you have honeybee? You... Yep. You want me to close the door? Uh, just put the gate up. Okay. Stay. They don't seem to have really any magic items. I don't know if we could afford healing potions. Probably best we just get I a go I think you still on. have a healing potion you didn't use, correct? I have one on me. No, I just mean, like, I don't know what we would buy that we haven't already... Speak, speaking of that, I just now didn't that... know if you were trying to... to get any kind of, like, food or clothing or anything like that pre -loved. I'll look for more ICP clothing. I, I'm able to heal myself now if I need to, or others. So All I right. still am holding the healing po potion, so if anybody else thinks they would need it more, I'm you more should give it to, to, to Harry or Jean. Because you and I can heal people. Who wants it? Gene, Harry, do you have any heals? Give Gene, do you have any heals? No, but give it to Harry. Alright. Harry, Harry, I'm, I'm going to give you a healing potion. I will take the healing potion. I will so you guys are potion. starting out back in the forest between um, Leafly Reese Village. Cool. Is that Cliff good? Cave and uh, mm, damn. The Village of Heartfelt. No, no shit, huh? It's two genes. It's just an illusion. All right, so it's nighttime. Um, 
This is where we were ambushed. I guess we start looking around for any evidence or anything we can find, any clues, anything. Keep in mind we have two blind people with the camera. I was going to say, you should give Harry light so he can investigate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am actually... Oh, fuck. I just don't want to get ambushed. Um, and then Harry still can't see anything, if that makes sense. Right. Like, even with light, we kind of deduce, like, a melee person has to be illuminating the targets, right? So... Yeah, uh, but... before... Go ahead. I was just going to say, is you it know what? Yeah. You can cast again, right? Yeah, I'll just cast it on, uh, Harry's, uh, shirt, Harry's, Harry's jacket, and if I cast it during combat, it's not really a big deal. Um... Uh, before we move or do anything, can we just like listen and look? Is there anything? Do we see anything or hear anything? When I say see anything, do we smell smoke in the air? Do we see smoke rising? Smell it? So the uh, two people that are blind, yeah. um, roll perception. My listening ears. I was gonna say we're not blind. It's just nighttime. <laughs> You are blind, it's nighttime. Well, you know what I mean. The two people that don't have dark vision. Yeah, yeah, no, I got you. You're fucking blind, it's dark as shit. <laughs> I guess you've never been outside before. I mean, it depends what the moon is at, at right now. But. I mean, shit, if we, live in, we all live in cities, so... Not that dark out at night. I've spent whole nights out in the woods with no light, flashlight, or anything. If well, you're not... moon, it's gonna be bright as yeah. shit out. Yeah. All right. Sorry, guys. We're only playing a magical fantasy game. That was my mistake. You yeah. should be sorry. We, we, in magical games, the moon doesn't exist. And just yeah. for the record, never forgive <laughs> Just for the record, dark vision doesn't mean you can see in the dark. It means you can see in dim light. You see in grayscale. Yeah, but you can't see in pitch black. So which is a grave? Is it pitch black or not? So are we get are we talking about the physics of like light particles entering no, our read, eyeballs? Go read dark vision. It says you can't see in pitch blackness or in dark, Hello, magical darkness. Nurse. We rolled a three and a twelve. All right. You've got dim. You can see in dim light. Boom. A monster so. with dark vision can see in dark within a specific radius. The monster can see in dim light within the radius as dim if it were light. bright light. And in darkness, as if it were dim light. Dim light? We got a couple <laughs> of dim lights going on. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> got him. All right. So, uh, who rolled 12? I'm not looking, I'm fixing I rolled 12. I rolled, I rolled 12. 12. So, Gene, you, um, you can hear just vaguely uh, that Avery on shrieking sound. It's like a hum, like an excuse me, I almost said abbreviation, like a vibration coming, uh, and it when you turn your head from side to side, you can hear it more coming from the north end of where you guys are heading. I uh, I say, can you guys hear that? I can because yeah. I have dark vision. True. <laughs> yes, because my passive is higher than that roll. Sounds like they're that way. Yeah. Go the noise. <laughs> Go towards the screaming bed. Sounds of terror? And okay. I, I think we're like slowly walking, right? Being cautious. Like if anything, yeah, you guys are kind of just like trying thing. to be quiet and yeah. cautious, I would assume. Yeah. Moving because you're in, uh, obviously, like he warned you, you know, this is not your strength where you're moving through. You're moving through forests that may be their territory that they're very familiar with. They may have far superior sight and hearing. You may be walking into a trap. You don't know. So you're trying to be quiet. So. I'm guessing when we get to this point, we're gonna have to climb this cliff. Is that is that like just a steep incline, or is that like? It's like a ten foot 
kind of next level. If you want to go up that way, you can go around. It's, that's up to you when you get there. Okay. Go around. I'm going to go around. Up we go. Um, the two of your roll perception again. So when you guys kind of crest, the two of you kind of crest that next level uh, first, you can hear like echoing now that trilling vibration loud and clear of those uh, Abrians. And you tell the uh, other two that are still kind of climbing up that you can hear them. Because uh, they can't hear them yet. I would assume you would tell them anyways. Yeah. I'm confused. Why can't I hear? Because you're lower. You haven't climbed up to the next level yet. Okay. I'm just saying that the two of them have climbed up in front of you. Because you can see better in the dark, you're letting them kind of climb up in front of you. Does that make sense? Yeah, Harry has light right now. Oh, you gave Harry light? I didn't know that. I meant light light. So how far does that light glow? Uh, 20 feet bright, 20 feet dim. Uh, and the light can be colored as I like, so I'll do uh, something to set the mood. What do you guys think? Like a red? Like a purple? Red? Red, I would yeah. Think purple? Something less noticeable by others from a far away? I'm going to go for the person I respect, and Harry <laughs> said red. Red's also good because it doesn't affect your uh, dark vision, like your pupils in real life. Cool. Oh, damn. Yeah, actually, that's true. And if we uh, brush our teeth, <laughs> 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 We'll be able to avoid paying as much uh, at the dock. I would like to start stealthy. Okay. I will archived. Sorry. Go around and give everybody a smack on the ass. And give each of them bardic inspiration, which is, uh, I'm not rolling for you, I'm just making sure we're all aware. Oh, shit, I didn't roll it. Is this it? Is the smack on the ass part of the spell? Yeah, uh, just showing it's a d6 in case anybody can see it later, but I'll tell you if you want it. Bardic helps you with a one ability check, attack, or saving throw. But we should probably try to find something soon. <laughs> like tenish minutes ish. So are we going stealthy from this point on? Uh, does scale mail give disadvantage on stealth? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe not then. I mean, I can still roll for it and see how, yeah, it, man. how it works. I mean, I can give That's myself guidance and have a d4 plus. Y'all want me to try? Yeah, yeah dude, roll still. It's just funny when you roll shit. That's so that's a 15. You have a zero? Oh, oh. Yeah, I got a 15 plus a d4 for guidance. You're, you rolled better than all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 17. Harry, we're going to go quietly if you want to come. Okay. Quietly, I mean. I'm sorry if I'm not as stealthy as Nat you guys. Nat 20. <laughs> I am so Whoa. fucking quiet. <laughs> Here he's gone. He's a bright light that just disappears. <laughs> Supernova. I'm too blurry. You can't make me out. You thought she was red, but she just red shifted from the Doppler effect. Yeah. Yeah. 
Turns out Harry just disappears into the abyss. <laughs> oh shit! He's been the abyss the whole time. I am the abyss. <laughs> Alright, guys. So right. I drew a very scientific depiction of the birds we're looking for. Keep an eye out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What's that QR code? Why is the this not working? Page. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if the birds are the mastermind behind this whole thing. Probably. It's probably in your eyebrows. Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. I live near like a highway, so at any given time I hear the random accidents. Alright, as soon as the two of you uh crest that hill you can um, spooky. You can hear the spookiness. The trilling of the Abrians uh, get louder. Guys, I can finally hear what you've been talking about. <laughs> Harry, you're in stealth. We're all in stealth. Um, we got a 16, a 12, a 17, and a nat 20. Yeah, general okay. the shittest. With the highest bonus, too. <laughs> yeah. I think you just, like, fart. You guys kind of crest the hill. You see, um, kind of like a small road in between the trees. And, uh... Whoa, a new map! Work. That's fucking no. crazy, man. Try this again. There we go. Oh. I got Gravy. I got Jean. I got Harry. But where's Gel? We can, we can just, we can just drag just ourselves. Yeah. yeah, just move forward. No, I don't have my journal entry anymore. It's, it's still there, it's just archived. Uh -huh. and you have some like random one that I can't control at all. Yeah, it's, it's literally just a link to your D D beyond. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. You guys see um those of you with dark vision, you can see that the road is leading up to what appears to be a campfire that's like barely glowing. I, I will cut the light for now, the cantrip. It just would be really funny if we were uh, <laughs> like all fully illuminated in the middle of the night. With, Melting with a light? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just to kind of maximize our chances, and then never see us coming. Maybe at the last second I can cast light. If not, I'll f I'll try to help you. You are in stealth, um, but when you see the faint kind of glowing embers from the campfire, you see a figure kind of moving around the camp. Whoa, guys, hide in the bush, hide in the bush. See another moving around the campfire. I cast Gift of Alacrity on Gravy. A component sh a verbal shout at him. <laughs> Be careful! <laughs> do it faster, do it faster! Okay, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that if, and if I don't, just yell at me. So. You guys can see those two figures moving in front of the campfire, but it is pitch black in uh, the camp itself. So the fire is not burning. There's no no light coming from there. The only thing, the only way we can see is from the dark. You can see the faint, yeah. faint kind of coals themselves, mm -hmm. like glowing. But the fire itself is out. There is no other light emanating 
but those of you with dark vision can see that it is a camp. Those of you without dark vision cannot. Okay. How about? Oh gosh, I thought. Oh, let's just go back. Uh, Gal, you choose one um, non-dark vision person. Doing like a buddy system here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll take Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly choose. I, I mean, that's it. fine. I mean, it makes sense. Gene and I will be in melee, and you guys are ranged. So, remember, Gene uh, changed his uh, course. Oh, he's not. Actually. He's not melee anymore. But right. he will support you from afar. Yeah. Yep. Um, I like pull Harry's hand because I'm not trying to lose him. I so hold I'll pull him up to the street. Gel's belt. <laughs> well, he walks <laughs> forward. All right. Well, I'm thinking, I was thinking like we could circle around through the the bushes here and see if we can get any more viewpoints to make sure we're not going to get ambushed if we just run right in there. You have but not. If you want to run right in there, yet. we can. Uh, Harry, if you want, you can move up to Gravy. We'll just couple up. Sure. One second. I am. I touch something that requires me to thoroughly wash my hands. No worries. No worries. It was dead mice. Delicious. Blah. Okay. I'm with you in spirit, and now I'm going to be with you at my computer as soon as I... So do we want to move around them and try to flank them and get more angles, or do we just want to go straight in? Uh, and oh. keep in mind you're talking to Gene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We should look around, see what we can see. Okay. I I'm going to start then moving slowly through this way to see if I can get any more viewpoints of anything else. Yeah, I'll try to kind of thread, like, you see this, like, pathway? Or you don't see it, Harry, but I'm going to try and thread. anything. I mean, and, Victoria. And as I'm I see new things, things, I'll tell Gene everything I see, but I haven't seen Somewhere like around here. Gotcha. I'll try to pull... I'm going to see if I can try to get us, like, up here. Um, because there's like a little bit of a clearing there, and I'm not trying to stand next to all the. Uh, I pick up some rocks off the floor, uh, and I cast magic stone on them, and I give them to Gel. What the fuck? What does that do? Magic stone. Can you basically oh, turns them into a badass. Not really that badass, but it's a D6 plus my spell cast modifier and damage. So you have a ranged weapon if you need it. You're automatically proficient in it, so. By throwing it or hurling? Wow, you can just yeet the rope. Yeah, just throw a rock. <laughs> it would be my spell casting modifier, right? Ah, uh, no, it's mine. Adds... Oh. Not so... the attackers, yeah. Okay. Wow, that's funny as hell. Yeah. I, no I read it and I was like, I have to get before. it. I have to get this it. This is wonderful. I've never seen that in my life. Uh, and my spell attack bonus is 6, so it would be d6 plus 6. Dang. Do they do they last forever or uh, a minute basically? No, one minute. Okay. But I can just keep recasting until we engage because it's a cantrip. All right. Um, uh, Cricket, do I see anything else if we move over here? Does it? Do we see any more enemies potentially, or do we still so, just see two? Those of you, which would include you, you will be able to see. You just see dense trees. You see a couple of tents barely peeking out, and you see. How far is Dark Vision? 60 feet? 60 feet. Okay, so 12 squares, roughly. If it's 5 foot map. Ah. And then, Gail, and Gail, you can see that there are three additional creatures kind of standing over here. Gravy, do you see those? No, he wouldn't be able to see it from his angle. Okay. Uh, I don't think. Maybe. Let me see. Actually, no, he I'm can. probably cl he can I'm see. closer than you, bitch. Yeah. No, you're closer. Sorry, bitch. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I tell Gene, all right, there's not just the two. There's five of them that I can see now. There's three in the back. I'm kind of jelly. These guys kind of have a nice camp. So 
I think we're probably still going to go in with the same approach. Just be aware that they, they could run in on us and overwhelm us, potentially. So, just... I don't know how this works. So, when you guys have stealth, and you have to make... You have to make the initiative before I have everyone roll initiative. So, first things first, you would roll perception on all your dudes to see if they see yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then if they're actively, they don't. if they're actively looking, right? Because right, right. there's always passives. There's if you passive wanna, perception too, yeah. You can use that. And then you can have someone be like the watch if you want. And if we right, and if they don't see you, then you guys have to attack first. If we attack first, then we get a surprise round, but that's only if they okay. don't see us or hear us all or right. whatever. And then I have everyone roll initiative. Yep. Yeah, surprise would mean like. It's the first round, but the people who got surprised lose that turn, essentially. So you guys are kind of creeping up on the um, camp here. You can see these five figures kind of moving around, not making a sound. You can just see them barely kind of shifting and dragging themselves you know, around very slowly. You can hear the Abrian's vibration much much louder and it sounds like it's coming from all sides of you um but you also hear like a loud kind of shrieking every few seconds um that sounds like much higher pitch than the abrian okay uh harry we're gonna just move 15 feet okay just hold okay. on i guess i would try to get like here if you just want to sit like here Okay. Um, I'll tell Harry uh, I see five ghouls or five demons um, I think because we're not coordinated with the other team we should probably maybe wait for them we'll wait for their first <clears throat> yeah. Harry will draw his bow to be yeah. I'll hold a I will hold my cantrip Vicious Mockery as a reaction if I am to see Jean or Agil attack. Not to see them, but if these demons are to be attacked. I mean, um, if we could coordinate, I would say <laughs> I would say it'd be cool if you could shoot like a light arrow in the middle of all that to just light up the combat zone so the rest of you guys who can't see would be able to see them. That'd be the first volley, I think. But That'd be pretty sick. Yeah. If we could talk. Nice. Uh, I, I <laughs> asked Gil if he wants me to try to distract them, or whether mm. he just thinks we should attack from the bushes. Um, well, I mean, all right. above the table, I don't know how D&D &D combat in this situation is going to work, but I mean, my m most priority would be is to ensure that we maintain our surprise round if we can. So I don't, I'm scared if I move up, they might perceive us as we get closer. Um, so I'm thinking we take ranged attack from here, or if you think you should try to distract them. Um, why don't you throw a rock and then move up, and I'll wait for Harry's light arrow, and then I'll attack, I guess. Okay. Because <laughs> I can't do shit until that happens. You, you can't see them, right? Right. Basically, that's why I'm thinking the light arrow would be, and you got right. the light source and the arrow over there in the bushes. All right. Give me, just give me, I have a plus zero, okay? <laughs> I'm, gonna, hmm? I'm gonna say this. If I roll, like, a, a 13 or higher, I'm smart enough to figure this out. Okay, yeah. Nailed it. Nailed yeah, it. I nailed it. I, Me, the guy with the only light, is waiting for the one blind guy and one seeing guy to do something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to throw one of the rocks. What did you say that was, a D6? D6 plus 6. Oh, yeah, but I need to do the oh, plus just four, a sorry. D20 would be with my my attack on it, would be with my attack modifier. So you or someone else can make an arranged attack, spell attack with one of the pebbles. So, but I'm saying my attack, would it be with my, my strength modifier? Uh, so it adds on? my spell casting ability, which is plus six. For, for the attack? Yeah. So d20 okay. plus six. Uh, Cricket, just to double so check. 18 what, to hit. Was there a light source from the um, campfire, or is it out? It's barely smoldering, so we can't really see much. Oh, you can see no it, light. but you can't see anything around it, yeah. 
and I'd be aiming at goal five here, but just wanted to make sure that I was within range. I am, right? Yeah. Yep, 60 feet. I am, uh, because <laughs> I forget Harry's blind. I, me, I see it. Let me see I, if I can realize this. <laughs> yeah, Harry's got a big tenor of. Oh, okay. Harry's like, man, Gravy, it would be great if perhaps I could. I can't get a good shot on them. Do you think we should. Do, should you light one of my arrows? Yeah, I can light it on fire. Uh, you know what? That works too. Uh, that sounds I can't like a create great fire, idea. actually. Oh, well then, never mind. Maybe I could use that cantrip. Uh, which cantrip? That one that made your jacket really cool. Oh, yes. I do like that one. Okay, well, uh, I can cast it on uh, you, or the bow, or your equipment. What do you think? Maybe not on me. That would make me a target. Maybe your boots? I could throw my boot at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. Let me let, pick up your boot, and I'll light it up and you could throw it. Maybe something that's made to be thrown. You can throw one of your arrows. Throw gravy. You, you're right. Oh, we could throw you. But that might, that's, that sounds dangerous. I think Gel could throw me. Maybe we should go back. Maybe we should go back. No, let's not bother them. I'll throw an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You know what? This bow. This bow. It makes the arrow get further. I think you have I two bows. Why don't you just throw one of the, the extra bow? Yeah, I'll throw my extra bow. <laughs> good, good idea, disembodied. Throwing a like gun at him? <laughs> Well, how about this? If I light up one of your arrows, you just have to make sure you hit. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, I All think right. you just shoot with this advantage if you can't see them in the first place, right? I aim for the fire. Yeah, the coals. Okay. Yeah. It It'll hit some. Cool. Yeah. Hey, hopefully. Now you still have Bardic if, it <laughs> if it's not the best. It'll go in this general direction. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. All cool. right. Harry, as soon as I light up this arrow, you have to let it fly. It doesn't have wings, Gravy. It's not, not everything's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready? Sure. Okay. You don't look ready. I've got it, Tron. How much more ready do you want? <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Are you sure? As as soon as my arrow lights up, I'm going to I light launch, it up. yeah, launch it towards the campfire, the smoldering embers. Okay, I shoot my glowing arrow at the campfire. Yep, and I threw a rock. Gee, yeah. Did you hear Avery come in? Nope. I have my door closed. Eh? Uh, I didn't either, and the dogs didn't bark, and they always bark as soon as that door comes opens and the ring goes off the ring went off apparently he's been here for 25 minutes he has been here for about about like 22 minutes yeah you did hear the ring go off no but it did go off wow oh. I, I don't know how the fuck we didn't hear any of that cause I just like message Shauna and I was like, "Is he coming?" And she's like, "He's been there for 23 minutes." And I was like, "Okay, now I feel dumb. Like, I don't even know when he's coming and going in the house. That's never happened before, ever." He ninja did. He's a teenager. Yeah, I think he did. All right, sorry. So you fire your arrow at the campfire. Yes. It seemed like a decent target to aim at when I can't see anything else. So that's my plan. All right. And it's a, it's lit up, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So as soon as you fire it uh, and it lands in the campfire, the uh, abyssal ghouls here all kind of turn to look at it 
and start hissing and then looking around for you guys. So let me... Well, you guys all get your round because you're surprising them. Uh, that... Oh, God. I wish I was... Can you, you guys can see that circle, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so at the light that's being yeah. cast. That's like the light circle, so... Obviously, the center is brighter. Right, okay. So, so whoever is... hasn't gone yet, you get a turn before I have everyone roll initiative. Yeah. So just me? <laughs> it would be Gene and Gil. Gil threw a yeah. rock. Oh, nice. Gil threw a rock okay. for 18 to hit. Does that hit? But where did you throw the rock at? Ghoul 5. At Ghoul 5. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I had to cast light, so I'm not doing anything. Yes, the 18 hits. All right, Gel D6 plus six, I think. Eleven damage. Right. The rock kind of smacks the ghoul right in the face. He's like, oh. Excuse me. Sorry. Gene. Uh, I'm going to cast grease. If I go ahead and roll initiative and then check on something. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to cast Grease across here, so if they go towards Harry and Gravy, they have to make it through difficult terrain or full prime. Okay. You want to draw a little circle? Yeah. Please. And then um, everyone can even roll initiative then. I rolled a natural one. Oh man, I did not do this for Oh well, hell. Gravy, did you add your D8? Oh, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, six initiative. You went from last to third last. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, let me click on my icon. And... There we go. I'm on the list. <laughs> Gravy, what's your final? Six. I just put it on the tracker. Okay. Everybody's still on the tracker from before, so. Except for Jean.
All right, so Harry. Your first yep. one? Uh, Gene, I don't see you on the tracker. Yeah. Unless that's just me. You uh, can uh, uh, right click. Mm, I don't know. I don't see Gene as well on the tracker. Yeah, I'm not on there. Yeah. Maybe refresh or something. Shut up! Yeah, my uh, character sheet wasn't loading, so. It could have been like the older initiatives. Maybe. It, yeah, I don't right. see I'm any of the. He's, he's fixed it. It's there. Yeah. You just have to sort now. You should be good. Good to go. Yep. Alrighty. I will go ahead and shoot. Which school is left? The five? Four. Four. I will shoot ghoul four. Can you guys not see the nameplate on any of these? I see uh, it on one, see. three, and five. Yeah, on three, five. I don't see it on that one. Now I see. Mm -hmm. And not on two. I see four now, and then not two. And I see two now. I have a D6, right? Yep. Bardic Inspiration. I'll go ahead and use that. <laughs> Good. Does a 12 hit? 12 does hit. Yay! Whoa, yay! Whoa! Best archer in the West. Best archer, 9 damage. It's my turn. Do you have any bonus actions or anything? Do I have any bonus actions? No, not I can. Well, wow, whoa, I do. You I might do. have Hunter's Mark. I'm so stupid. Ah, I do this all the time. I'll use Hunter's Mark on Ghoul 5. Boom. <sighs> I always forget that. Why did I Why did I roll for Hunter's Mark? Better Don't remember. Roll. Whatever, I cast Hunter's Mark on Ghoul 5. And then that's my turn. Does, does Hunter's Mark do damage or just track them? It yeah. adds damage to a target. And why? I just wanted to link what it does. Yeah, it it's because it only does damage. So like. Yeah. Oh yeah, but it has that tracking code. It's funny. That's what I want. Okay. On Ghoul 5. Now that's my turn. Alright. Um, and then Ghoul 2. He seems to be the sharpest in the bunch. <laughs> Is that including the player characters? Yeah. Definitely. The smartest one is Gil. His levels of exhaustion. <laughs> he moves uh, 30 feet. Get out of here. He's thinking. Up to here. Go four. Don't forget, you can use their action to dash and go twice as far. Good going, buddy. It just means you can't attack when you get there, but yeah, yeah. you can get closer for next time. So We're gonna kick our ass now. He's gonna run through the tent. <laughs> through the back. He just has a tent on him now. Right up in front of Gil. 
Oh, shit. And then go I'm going to take an opportunity attack on it. I get to attack the ghoul when it comes into my range. Go ahead and attack it then. Home arm master. Oh, that's why you picked up the spear? Yes. We're Smart. Um, so We're level four. 13 to hit. How do you have that arm master? I got it as cause it's part of the uh, uh, custom lineage feat. Damn. Paladins get custom. Damn. No, it's it's uh, when I remade my character. Some of them get speech at level one. Yeah, but it usually depends on like I what you're saying human. your paladin came from. I mean, we can figure it out now or we can figure it out later. Doesn't matter. Uh, all right, so 13 hits. Six piercing. We hit for six. Okay, and then uh, goal four is going to go um, straight towards gravy. There is grease in front grease. of me. Okay, he has to do a deck save or he goes prone. Okay. Uh, it gets to 14. Make the save, make the save. Yeah, buddy! And that also ends. Oh no, he. Wait, he passes, right? 14? Yeah. Okay, it's 14. Damn. Yep. Meets it, beats. Damn! And he lashes out at you with his claws. If only there was some sort of protective barrier. <laughs> Does a 14 hit? Oh, yeah. He hits for nine slashing damage. Uh. And then you need to roll a constitution saving throw. A five. So you were paralyzed for one minute. Ooh, let's see. Sounds good. Gene. Um... guys can still hear the Avrians kind of vibrating like they know you're here now they're getting louder they can sense that uh, there is an attack happening the sounds are getting louder and coming closer already uh, I'm gonna cast as a bonus action uh, curse or hexblades curse specifically <clears throat> and then I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast to do damage I guess which is a disadvantage because I'm in melee. Does a 15 hit? A 15 does hit, but wouldn't you have gotten an attack of opportunity as well if Gel did? Because it's no, Gel's. No, uh, he has a feet. That lets him do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gel has Polar Master. So I do 12 force damage, and he gets knocked back 10 feet. Damn. Woof! Yep. He kind of screeches, and he's knocked back the 10 feet, and he's uh, just barely kind of still on his feet, like, raggedly breathing his arms down on the ground. Making a little <clears throat> Mewly ghoul sounds. And then I step behind Gil. Smart. Gil. Alright, I'm gonna go. Gene. I can't control my character right now because it's like, I think it's because of the circle. No, if you click the. Oh, wait, no, I just. No, I got tool. my. Yeah, I got my thing off. 
Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to move up to attack uh, number two. 21 Damn. to hit. You hit? Eight piercing. You're going to kill him. What does it look like? Yes. You pierce him with your spear. Um. So he, he looks like a ghoul, right? So I'm just going to spear it right through his eye and then kind of fling his head to the ground. Just kind of pierce him straight into the ground. He goes <laughs> quiet immediately, that kind of ragged ghouly breathing. Yeah. Stops. He's done for. Alright. And let's see, how far did I move? It was from there. Uh, ten feet. So I think I can get here. Are you going to take your spear out of his head first? Or? Yeah, yeah. It, it okay. came out of his head. Didn't leave it there. And then I'm going to use the bonus action, which I believe can be used on a different creature as long as it's in the same turn. Mm -hmm. Which is... Yep, bonus action. Weird text, but uh, it's a 20 to hit. That hits? And seven bludgeoning. You kind of crack him up beside the head for seven. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you might be limited by uh, the D4. I don't know if it's a bonus. It's just because they'd make it. No, weird. you you get the you get to add your modifiers on it. Okay, cool. Seven, smashing. You've knocked the sense out of them. And that is my turn. And uh, the ghoul's been lumbering towards you. And he runs right up to you, and he bites you. Okay, well, I get the uh, opportunity attack when he comes in. Isn't that a reaction? Yeah. So you can only have one. But I use I use one I use one reaction before my turn, and then after yeah. my turn it resets. You got it back on the turn. Right. Do you have to wait until after he attacks you though, or do no. you? Get no, it's just when he comes first. into the range. Okay. Yeah. So when, when he, he comes into range, then you go ahead and attack him. Nine piercing. Okay. Little strong boy, girl. Spear him right in the Pussy. chest. As he's clutching it, he still manages to reach forward and bite you. Sanitary. Does not hit. But he does not hit. Just kind of leaning against you. Embarrassed. <laughs> Gravy. Ew. My turn. Oh, uh, I'm paralyzed. Do I get a save at the end of my turn? Yes. Yeah. Depends on the thing. Okay, it cool. Says, yeah. On save. DC 10. No, so 21. each turn is like six seconds, right? Yeah, but he gets a save at the end of each turn as well. Yeah, yeah, I, but if he doesn't hit any of them, he's got to wait, like, ten, ten rounds. Yeah. Okay. Um, I save, and my turn ends. Nice job. All right. Abyssal Ghoul has had enough. He's finally awake. Abyssal Ghoul won. I've had enough with you freaking millennials. Lashes out with his claws at Gil. <laughs> I've had enough of you millennials! Coming into my camp! Attacking my friends! Fourteen to hit. You have advantage. Yeah, you do. 
do I get advantage? Because you're flanking. flanking. With goal three. You have a flank. Okay, thank you're you. You're beating the shit out of him. <laughs> I... When the window is covering the map, I always forget. Yeah, there's three. a lot to have as a DM. Don't worry, I get you, Cricket. You and I, intellectually, we're on another level. So we're taking the 14 hit. and we're taking the 14 and the nine, or the nine and the 18. 18. Okay, 18 hits. So the 18 hits and the seven slashing damage, and then you have to do a Constitution saving throw. You got this. Five. You are paralyzed. I I will just ask for a quick. Did you already use your uh, bardic? He no. Has it. If you want, it's a d6, so it's a pretty high gamble, but it's up to you. On the Constitution save. You can use it on a save if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You just add a d6 and pray for a five or a six. Yeah, I mean, I use it. It's a. Pretty, you know? I mean, being paralyzed is going to suck, so you should use it, I would say. Yeah. Also, you've killed a couple, so... Uh, kind of... Oh! Oh! I'm the there best! I'm the Damn best it. bard! Did you say it still fails? No, no. Oh. So there you go. A genie still have yours, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think you're the last one. And then five uh, does the same. He reaches out to claw you. And twenty is gonna hit. Is, <laughs> are, are, is, is that a nine and a twenty? That's two different. That's rolling advantage. How smart are the ghouls? But, but the no, the number five is not blanking. Right. How smart are the ghouls? Because if he's smart, he would just move one square to the right, and then he would be flanking or left. Well, no, no. Let's not get too minutia here. You're surrounded by three people. <clears throat> yeah. Right. The, all three of them are flanking you together. They're not. They're. Not, they don't have to go opposite side of each other. You're being surrounded. Okay. It. It doesn't have to be one, two, three, four like a goddamn diamond. Like you're being fucking gangbanged right now. Like you got three people on you. So he's going to hit you for seven slashing, and then you need to do another uh, constitution saving throw. Nice. All right. So you're not paralyzed, but there's a seven slashing. I would have assumed you would have been flanking with three around you anyways. That's why I rolled it with advantage. I think you're correct. I think flanking. I mean, you're not you're not wrong, right? Because you're being surrounded. There's one in the front and one in the back, but well, from a technical three, standpoint, I mean, so if goal five moved one square to the left or right, by the rule of being diagonally across from someone, you would be flanking. So even if the three aren't, he could have used one square of movement to flank. So I don't think it matters. Then he's gonna move. So I just assumed with three people, like. There, that's enough to surround a person. So yeah, you you, you're you're surrounded on so. three sides. Like, right. It's the technicality doesn't even matter because he's still flanked. Definitely. He's like, there's two people directly across from him. He's being flanked. So, yep. I, I right. agree. With you. So I just want to make sure. So like, we keep it standard for, for the rest. Of the yep. Campaign. Um. Okay. So we take the seven slashing, and it is Harry's turn. Ghoul four is kind of out of the light range, but can I see him, like, at this point? Just kind yeah, of you at can. the edge of my vision. Okay. Yeah. You can sort see his, flashing. like, kind of silvery, uh, slimy skin. Gross. Reflected in the light in front of you. you Very can definitely hear him nearly panting. Not wanting gravy to nearly die. Under his stewardship again. Oh god. Harry shoots at Ghoul 4. Uh, I mean, I hope I'm the only one who does. 
guys uh, do a lot more damage. Than me. <laughs> Wait, are you hitting him with a scimitar? Oh shoot! Add two to that, and that's my short bill. So Eighteen hits, I assume. Okay. Yep. Four damage. You hear him kind of shriek out just in front of you. You can hear him breathing now, panting. Even hear the saliva dripping out of his mouth onto the leaves below. Very, very unhappy. He moves forward, straight in front of you, and now he goes for you, Harry. Going to lash out with his claws again. Screeching. Eep! He hits you. 20. He has six slashing damage. Ow! And you must do a constitution 10. wonder why he hits for less. How does that make sense? He just rolled bad on his d4s. Pause versus oh, bite. It automatically rolls. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> close. Ow. So now you are paralyzed. Take six slashing damage. <laughs> These guys are gonna kill me. <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna move forward. Um, to there. Uh, and then I'm gonna blast this ghoul in the butt. Uh, go for. Okay. With Aldrich Blast. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just leave Gail over there. <laughs> Surrounded by three two. No. I'm gonna use my bardic. i my best. Uh, so you don't hit him with a 10. You still have Do I hit him with an 11? <laughs> or an 11. Damn it! 11 misses? <laughs> yeah. Gel? Do you have the Chun Li kick? Because that would be very helpful right now. I do have the Chun Li kick. Smart. Oh, God. Um, just trying to find it. I think I do. Might yeah, not. triple splice. Gene, when you hit your Eldritch Blast out, the sound of the blast kind of uh, is super loud and uh, misses and like strikes a tree beside him. But it's then that you notice with the sound radiating in your ears that the vibration and the trill of the birds is really loud, very obtrusive now. It is still sounding like it's on all sides of you guys. Mm. Ruh -roh. All right, I'm oh, going to use my channel divinity. Every creature within 30 feet, which I think will hit all these ghouls. Damn. Has to make a wisdom saving throw. Or be afraid. Or be feared. And, be afraid. Uh, and my DC is 12. So the. Yeah, 12. Anything cool above 12 passes. Beats it. Cool one. Cool five does not. Does not. Oh wait, it didn't even roll it. And it's twelve, you said. Twelve to the DC, yeah. So the third one beats it as well, then. And then let's see what happens to him when it fails. He becomes frightened of you. So, Ghoul Five is afraid. You gotta Feared. roll one more. There's one more, yeah. Ghoul Four will get hit. Oh, damn, I didn't realize four would hit. Okay. He's just stunting on us with this, like, new normal. Yeah, and just paralyzing us in the and corner. And that one is feared as, as well. Which one's failed, Cricket? Sorry, four? Five, four? Four and five failed. Okay, cool. Good. I sure do like not dying. Gel. Do you One move? Second. Do you do anything else? Okay. I'm not moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you sure? Just a triple paralyze. I have as a bonus action. It's going to become beef jerky. Alright. 
I'm going to cast Shield of Face on myself, which is going to give mm. me, I believe, two more AC. Yep. Temporary. And now I'm done. Right. Cricket, that would be throwing the book at you. You're putting it on yourself, right? He puts it on himself, too. Yes. Okay. I'm playing a paladin in the other campaign. Ricketts furiously taking those. I am. I'm like writing down tomorrow. Uh, don't forget. My channel divinity is different, though. Um, it's way cooler. <laughs> Uh, Ghoul 3 is just going to do the same thing. He's going to lash out uh, with his teeth, though, this time. going to take a big bite out of your ass, hopefully. 19, I'm assuming, hits. No, it hits, yeah. No. Oh. 9 piercing damage. What are you looking like here, Gel? Not good. <laughs> I got I got three more hit points. Oof. And then uh, gravy. Uh, Gel has to roll concentration save. Oh, that's right. See if you're not uh, paralyzed any longer. No, 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 not for that. For his spell. Uh, the shield of faith is like a concept spell. Oh, I thought you already did that. Every time you take damage, you have to re-roll for constitution saving throws for spells. Yeah. Be painful. Well, that'll help me for tomorrow because I'm going to follow that. All right, Gal. Actually, I don't think it's a concentration on me. I think they get to reroll on their turn to see if they're still saved. It's not a concentration spell. The Divine Divinity? Duration. Oh, no, the no, Shield of Faith. Yeah. Shield of Faith. Which one? Uh, the concentration Shield of Faith. up to 10 yeah. minutes. Okay. Yeah. So when you get hit, you it breaks your concentration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's a seven, so that's probably a fill. Yeah, that is yeah, a fill. Yeah, so. so constitution, uh, constitution saving throw for a spell concentration is ten or whatever half the damage is, whichever is higher. So shield of faith isn't up right now. Yeah, it, it, it not dropped. any longer. Yeah. Uh, so one is it's one's turn. So one's gonna do. No, it's thing. my Gravy turn. Good. It's my turn. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you went. Yeah. But you no worries. I know you want to kill girl, but I do, I don't want to kill anyone. It's uh, more work for me. The ghouls so want to kill him. <laughs> the ghouls want to kill him for sure. They got him surrounded. That's funny. I think he also stabbed every single one of them already too. So. Yeah. What the fuck is this? Alright, whatever. I'm still surprised gonna, that the four of you went out in the fucking darkness. I'm gonna cast the the <laughs> shatter on these two, three and like five. Okay. Uh, con save 13. I'll start rolling for them then. And wait, so five is feared, so. Uh, I think it has a disadvantage on attacks. I just don't think it'll help me on it's this spell. Yeah, ability checks and attacks. So it's five fails. Okay. I know it failed, but it also has disadvantage. Right? Does it? Oh no, not on saving throws, just ability checks. You're right. Yeah. I think it's like attacks or some shit. Yeah, it's attacks and ability checks. Oh, cool. I know the ability. Doesn't seem that helpful, but. <laughs> uh, the second one saves. And so. Three. Three's yeah. Not shattered. So. so Twelve hundred uh, damage to. Five? Six to three. Six to 
country, it takes half. So yeah. um, you're going to kill five, and take you're not going to kill three. So tell me what happens to five. Um. Uh, yeah, so a loud ringing noise erupts from uh, this beside Gel. Um, and uh, 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 I think <laughs> I don't know what the noise is. Uh, just a just a loud a uh, clap. Yeah, a loud tweet, like a uh, cricket's phone uh, text notification. Someone's phone's just, going off. Loud just as like fuck. smashes next to Gil's ear and gives him like really bad tinnitus. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so I think just because it's like thunderish damage, he kind of just like concusses it, like. I don't know. Just kind of like implodes a little bit. Goes slamming against the log, limp, dead. Nice. Anything else? Um. Uh, that's a spell. I can't cast another spell. How long does your grease last? One minute. One minute. Okay. Uh, action, action. No bonus action. B A. You, yeah. I, I, I end my turn. I will keep a healing spell for after if Gil goes down. But that's my turn. That's me. So I killed five. He's going to lash out at uh, Gil with his teeth. I'm going to bite you. <gasps> Sixteen hit. Sixteen hits. Oh. He does nine piercing damage, so you're down. Five is dead. <laughs> Harry. You hear kind of like a oh. You recognize it as the sound gel, but it stops uh -oh. abruptly. Harry tries to shake off the paralysis. What's the save? Is it con? Yes. Ooh. You are up. Awesome. Is Ghoul Four? I would go for is afraid. If I try and run, would I would he take opportunity attack? Uh, uh, Harry, I mean, when you when you end paralysis, it unfortunately wastes. Oh, your does turn. it consume my movement and my action? It like it's at the end of your turn. You make oh, another okay. save, and then unfortunately, it's like uh, okay, cool. I woke up. <laughs> yeah, <it's kinda laughs> no, you're fine. Thank you for reminding me. That's Where's my turn. Then? I'm looking just so we know. Yeah. yeah. I just put it in chat at the bottom there, Cricket. Target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending the effect on itself on a success. Okay. Um. So, goal four is going to uh, gnash its teeth back out at Harry. Woo! Thank God. Misses. It's really bad at its job. He's kind of covered in grease, and he's like sliding around everywhere. So his own jaw is just like he hit himself in the lip. But his booty is glistening. Really his booty is glistening. Hanging off those hip bones. <laughs> Gene. Well, fuck. Yeah. I will.
I will cast, I think I'm going to cast Sleep. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast Sleep uh, on Gel's area. So 20 feet around Gel. I roll a bunch of hit dice. If it equals their health or more, they all fall asleep. Okay. Their health? Yeah, it's just my roll against how much health they have left. Once. Mm -hmm. So, for the first creature it, you get to pick, if it has more than 18 health, it stays awake and my spell does nothing. If it has less, it goes to sleep, and then whatever's remaining goes to the next creature to see if it falls asleep. I think it's lowest first. Yeah. So, Ghoul 3 is going to be put to sleep then. Okay, great. And then whatever's remaining over its health? Said. Yeah, so if it had five health, then the 13 would go to the next dude. Alright, and does it take damage or just contributes towards it going to sleep? Yeah, so if it's over its health remaining, then it goes to sleep as well. Okay, so it is not asleep. Okay. So which one? Ghoul 3 is asleep? Ghoul 3 is asleep. Alright, great. Let me put a little sleepy time. Alarm clock on it. And then I guess I'll move into melee range of this ghoul. Okay. And say ooga booga in his ear. Gail, you want to try to get... Oh, well, you can. <laughs> uh, you have to roll to try to save yourself, I think. That's a save. Boop, 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 boop. What do you have to hit? Whatever you're... A 10. Uh. You're not dead! You're back awake! No, he's, he's still asleep. He has to succeed three saves to uh, become stable. Stable. No, he's not dead. You're right, he's not dead. No, I gotta do awake. it three times. He's not dead, he's not awake. Three saves, three fails. Alright, ghoul three is asleep and it can roll to try to wake up, right? No. No, he's just asleep. What's this reading? He's asleep one for one minute. minute. And if anything attacks him or whatever, he wakes up. Okay, so he's asleep. Skip his turn. Gravy. Uh, 5 HP bonus action to Gel. Uh, a beautiful tweet goes in his ear, not a shattering one. And then I will stab with my rapier at this guy for a 15. 6 damage to ghoul 4, and Gel gets 5 HP. Four is alive. Well, four is alive. He will. Uh, I will. Five, ten, fifteen. Uh, I will. <laughs> I'm gonna step onto the crease. Good luck. The deck save, right? Or de uh, acrobat? Deck save. save. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I slip and fall on the grease. <laughs> well, the good news is you're prone and it ends your turn, but they probably ended your turn anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it ends my turn. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> on your belly. Wait, doesn't does the ghoul get a attack of opportunity because he no. I, I I stayed within its uh, melee. Uh, hopefully. Oh, you and, fell uh, right in the first. Okay, hold on, mate. Yeah. Hold so me. I just like. Hopefully, set up a flank for Harry, but this I. This is my I, severe I, weakness. I fell. Oh, there's 20, 24. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. 
My turn now. I'm good. Sorry, my headset turned off. I'm like talking to myself. Uh, oh, you're good. So Ghoul One's alive and well, and is Gel like passed out with five health, or is he? He's also conscious, with five health? but he's still like. He's down. just. Yeah, he's just on the ground, but he he's has awake. He has HP. Um, and then if if he gets attacked again, he's dead, right? No. If you attack him, you get advantage, and you do max damage or something. I can't remember. It's pouring. No, you just get advantage. No, he just has advantage. The ghoul has advantage. Um, but if he does a shitload of damage, it will kill Gel. Yeah. But I would say I'm actively threatening him, so maybe he wouldn't attack Gel. I don't know. You're within melee range, and he's facing Gel, who's down. Maybe he's distracted because you scared him. He came up. You came up behind him, so he'll uh, try turn around and try to slash you with his claws. Bring it on, babe. Everybody should get paralyzed ones. Conditionally, not debility. That does and not hit. He's gonna miss. Okay. Yep. Harry, see you again. Okay. Uh, Harry, unfortunately, I'm not helping you. <laughs> I'm slipping in grease. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Squawking like a bird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm on the ground. In comparison to the sounds of the Abrians. He yelled caca when he fell over. Yeah. Is Ghoul 4 still trying to run away or is it attacking? It's so feared. It can still attack, it just can't move towards. Actually, I think it would have ended anyway. Because Gel went unconscious. Uh, it would have been one minute. I don't think it's been 10 turns. <clears throat> well, Gel so. went unconscious. So. Yeah, Gel. No, I think this oh. effect is just frightened. Okay. I can't swap weapons. I have to drop a weapon and then pull out scim the scimitar, wouldn't I? Oh, let's just swap weapons. Okay. <sighs> Harry quickly just swaps over to his scimitar and takes a quick slash at Ghoul 4. Do you guys want to? We're over time. Do you guys have to go, or do you want to finish this? I'm okay to finish combat. Whatever works for everybody. Jean. Good. John. Gail. I think Gail would be the only person. I'm good. We okay. can keep going. Do I get advantage or? Yes, because you're. Well, yeah, you're technically flanking. Uh, even though he could grab him by the ankles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he could grab him by the ankles, though. That's true. Hey, DM rules. Grease him. <laughs> throw some grease in his face. In case you haven't noticed, I'm heavy. Polly. Wait, yeah, grab his ankles. Polly is distracting, yeah. Polly's screaming. And you hit him for seven, me. you're gonna kill him with your scimitar. I slash him just across the throat, incidentally, as Gravy pulls him down. He slides down into the uh, muck. Harry Gastel is like, are you good, Gravy? Uh, I'm greased good up, gravy. hugging a... Yeah, <laughs> good Gravy. Good <laughs> Gravy. Fuck's sake. I'm rolling around with a dead corpse of an undead monster and a bunch now of Now's not the time for jokes. The only one laughing is Polly. <laughs> <laughs> Polly speaks English? What the fuck? I don't think that's English. Amazing. You're actually Polly's ventriloquist doll. Mm, yeah. Oh gosh. My only skill. <laughs> Alright, so Ghoul 4. Dead. Dead. Gene? Moited. Um, he just took a swipe at you with his claws. He did indeed. Action. Threatening. Gel. Amanda's friend. Other one's asleep. Yeah, but he was just pummeling fucking Gel sure. before he passed out. It's not like he was saved. DC 14 or take 6 damage. Uh, intelligence. Intelligence? I bet he's gonna fail that. Or take 6 damage, you said? Yep. 
He clutches his head and shrieks, looking up into the sky. That's right, Philip. It was very painful. Alright, Gel. Um, all right, I don't know how this works in the situation where I'm being flanked and I'm also flanking something. Does it still get? Do I still get flanking, or does it? Do they cancel out? Is so you're pounding those potions, bud. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I know I'm I'm a prone, but I can get back up, right? You're not being flanked because the other dude's asleep. Yeah, and uh, they don't cancel out. You just each have a flank effect. So you have advantage, and the other one's asleep. Right they now. still have their advantage on their turn, basically. No, because that one's sleeping He's right asleep. now. I mean, if they weren't sleeping, I'm just yeah, asking yeah. Them. No, you're you're right. You're right. Okay. It just doesn't cancel it. Like it's individually. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if I stand back up, is that a free action? It's half your movement. Half my movement. Okay. Well, I don't need it anyhow. So. Um, do the fucking Chuck Norris, like, back <laughs> on your feet. So I stand up, and I'm gonna attack the one that I have planking on with the uh, Ghoul. Gene. Ghoul one. And that was not great. You miss. I missed. I'm gonna now attack again with the bonus action. Mm. 21. And 6. Catch him by surprise. He shrieks out, removing his hands from his head, screaming. Ah! Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I forgot where his cords are. Um. And then under <laughs> him and the birds. In your immediate vicinity, him for just a brief second. And that's that's uh yeah. is he still alive he's still alive but you how's he looking right in between the shoulder blades it was very painful how's he looking almost dead he's looking like he's shrieking in pain hunched over backwards right, well. he's a ghoul he looks pretty fucked up already yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna to use a slide on him. I'm just going to try to finish him off. Um, I can find where I put it. There. And he is an undead or a fiend? Yep. Mm. Alright, that is 8 radiant damage. Um, is this a reaction? It the, the yeah. divine smite. You can use it after you use another ability uh, attack. Okay, so you don't have to roll a hit. It just adds no, it's just radiant afterwards. damage. Yeah. Okay, so you're Takes gonna kill him. What does it look like? Um, mm. his head catches on fire. <laughs> the radiant damage. Now he's really screaming. Ah, ah, ah! He's burning. And he's quiet. That's my turn. Ghoul 3 just watched you flame up his friend. He's gonna reach out to bite you. Wait, no, he's asleep. My yeah, bad. He's sleeping. He's sleepy. We all surround him and stab him at the same time. <laughs> Gravy. I get up for half my movement. <laughs> I get out of the grease. You step halfway to the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me see if I... Uh... <laughs> you clutch <laughs> yeah, no, the grass I... and roots. Yeah, I claw it out. Right. Get this entangled from the body. Get up. Fifteen. 
I will. Is this... Yeah, I'll just hold a vicious mockery on uh, the incapacitated ghoul if any of my allies are to attack. Ghoul number three, I will let loose my cantrip. Okay. That's my turn. Harry? Alright. You've got to just bow him from that far. And just yeah. Out just of nowhere, him. swoop in, shing him to death. He's out. Oh, hold on! I rolled the wrong dice. All right, that's thirteen to hit. That hits. You also have hunter's mark up. Yep. I do. If you just move it to that. I so that's 12 damage then. And 7 plus 1. So 8 damage. Yeah. And then I let loose my cantrip. It's just a wisdom save on the zombie. Uh, he's a. Okay. He's a cool. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Racist. Yeah, my bad. All right, fuck. That's uh, my reaction. He's studying in his dreams. He's learning all of the ghoul knowledge. Mm-hmm. While he's a very smart guy. Ghoul sleepy time. He's very old. He had to take a quick nap. He's very wise. All right, Jean. Um, I will walk up to him and stab him. Well, he's asleep. He's awake now. You hit him. He kind of cries out in pain. You'll regret this. <laughs> You're going to regret everything. <laughs> everything soon. Ah! He's not dead, though. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> He's just breathing raggedly. Anything else, Gene? Nope. It's all you, Gal. I'm going to move over here and attack 17 4 piercing and you're gonna kill him um I'm gonna shove it through his anus <laughs> and, and it's gonna come out cause I think he's facing Gene still so it's going through the anus and out the belly button and he's gonna just kind of shriek just a, like a like a spearhead just kind of poke out I'll give you the O uh, face oh and he just kind of collapses on your spear pull it out I'm going to put it in the anus and wash it and all the ghouls are dead that's where we will end it. Thank you for staying later. Sorry. That yeah, wasn't too late. Before you guys go, just wanted to apologize. Just because uh, I have different experiences with my game doesn't mean that I should put that on the party. So I definitely consider you guys friends and I should do better to trust your experiences and rely on the Shut game up. more. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Autumn. Yeah, well, now that you've moved over, you notice a figure moving behind you. Oh coming out of the. A fucking hag? We are fucked. And vines moving very slowly. Screaming at the top of her lungs. And that is all. Nice. Who's doing notes? You guys got fucked by those. 
I'm fine. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do initiative for notes again, or is someone gonna volunteer? Let's we'll roll. What did we roll last time? A 20? Just a flat 20, I think. Oh, Ooh! Yeah. I rolled a 3. I was like, I'm fucked. Yeah, okay, I'll just do the notes. Appreciate it. Love you, bye.